CrossFit is intense. The combination of interval style workouts using various exercise modalities makes it intense not only on the heart, the cardiovascular system, but also on the muscles, the whole neuromuscular system. In this video, I will dive into just how intense CrossFit actually is and present data on the recovery process, how many hours or days it takes to fully recover from one CrossFit session. And at the end of the video, I will give you some tips on how to accelerate this whole recovery process. So if you are an athlete who often engages into high intensity sports, this is a video you don't want to miss. All right, let's get into it. I'm Gomar. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I've studied the interaction between nutrients and exercise and how that affects muscle growth. But lately, I've been more and more involved in the research on CrossFit and functional fitness overall. So the topic of this video would be first to determine how intense one CrossFit session is and then how long it takes to fully recover from such a session. So what is cool, for the last couple of years, there's been more and more studies investigating the physiological effects of one CrossFit workout. So for example, what they did is they measured the oxygen uptake during a CrossFit workout, such as FRAN. So it's a typical benchmark workout that takes two to four minutes, so a very intense workout. And you see here that oxygen uptake immediately uh, goes up once you start working out. That makes sense because the muscles need the oxygen. But what that also means is that there's a large accumulated oxygen deficit represented by the black part here. This essentially means that a large part of the energy that is required to do FRAN is coming from anaerobic sources. So that already shows that FRAN or any typical short CrossFit workout is very intense by nature. So another way to look at intensity or how intense a certain exercise bout is would be via the respiratory exchange ratio. What is that? It's a difficult word for simply uh, measuring the amount of carbon dioxide the body produces and the amount of oxygen someone can take up. So that's a ratio between the two. And then you obviously get a certain number. And that number ranges from 0.7 to one or even above one. And the cool part here is that you can actually measure or assess the amount of carbohydrates or fats a person is relatively consuming at that point. So this means that when you are sitting at rest or when I'm now doing this video, there is obviously a low intensity or at least a moderate intensity. So I'm mostly using fats as an energy source, but then when the intensity goes up, for example, during FRAN or during a very hard workout, the body relies solely on carbohydrates because it's a more efficient way to produce energy, ATP, right? And when the value is above one, there's an anaerobic contribution to energy production. So everything below one would be aerobic, considered aerobic. Everything above one, there's also an anaerobic energy production. And that's quite interesting because then obviously you can measure what happens during CrossFit. For example, here in this, this study from Manuel Rios, a good researcher that did a lot of, let's say, physiological studies into uh, CrossFit. What they did simply is the same as I just showed with Fran. They measured oxygen consumption during a benchmark workout. In this case, it was Isabel. So for time, 30 snatches, all right? Typical CrossFit workout. And what they saw here is obviously that the intensity was very high because the RER, right after and at the end of the workout, so just when they stopped or put down the last barbell, was above one, I think 1.08. This means that a certain amount of energy was produced by anaerobic sources. Obviously, this means that it's a quite intense workout. Even in the recovery period, this number, this RER number crept up to almost 1.5, which indicates very high effort. Then you can say, okay, that's that's typical. We know Isabel is a very, and, and Fran are super intense, but what about longer workouts? So here they measured the differences or the, the, yeah, the variances between Cindy, so that's a 20 minute workout that is mostly or solely based on body weight exercises, and uh, Fran, as we know, 21, 59 thrusters and pull-ups. And you can see that even during Cindy, so during a 20 minute workout, there was 50% or 48% of the time the RER was above one. So this means that there's also a very intense 
part that is provided by anaerobic sources. Obviously during Fran, this number was higher up to 76%. So indeed, Fran is intenser, but also uh, obviously shorter, while uh, Cindy would be longer, but also having very high intensity compared to, for example, uh, other sport modalities. Then you can also look at lactate, obviously. When there is an anaerobic energy production, I always look at the more anaerobic, the more intense a workout is. It's not one-to-one -one correlated, but at least there's some uh, so strong relationship there. And you see that obviously uh, lactate is produced by anaerobic glycolysis or anaerobic sources. And when that goes very high, you can indicate also that the workout was very intense. And here you can also uh, see that many of the studies show uh, lactates of uh, 15 to even 20 millimolars per liter after a person has finished the workout, which is very, very intense and in, in literature uh, described as extreme exercise. So that's quite interesting how they always describe this, this kind of exercise. So before we go into the meat of the video where I explain how long it will actually take to recover from an intense CrossFit workout and how you can accelerate that recovery process, I want to quickly talk about our new programming. So we finally did it. We came up with, I think, some very nice uh, programs for individual athletes and maybe also group uh, sessions. So first of all, we have some fixed programs where as a functional athlete, you want to keep doing the functional training. So you want to keep doing uh, CrossFit high rocks, but you want to build on strength or conditioning. So we have these uh, programs now. It's a fixed seven to 12 week program that you can just implement in your training. Also, we provide season programming and that's pretty cool. So you can just jump in and we prepare you for the CrossFit season. So the, the CrossFit Open predominantly and also the qu quarterfinals where we focus on specific parts of CrossFit, for example, weightlifting, strength and conditioning. And at the end, we specifically focus on functional fitness and CrossFit programming. So if you are interested and you want to support the page and also get fitter along the way, just use the code that is popping up on the screen. It will give you 15% off of all our uh, programs and not unimportant, you have a seven day trial period. So if you don't like it, you can just walk away without paying anything. All right, let's jump into the remainder of the video. So that's nice. We know how intense CrossFit is, a very high anaerobic contribution of energy production. So how long then does it take to recover? What you can do, you have different, let's say, recovery parameters. And one really good recovery parameter is simply performance. And the performance measurement that many coaches, but also researchers use is counter movement jump. It's basically you stand on a force platform that measures the amount of Newton you produce, and then you jump as high as possible with straight legs. And this is a good determinant on how well you recover from a hard exercise or back squats or Fran or any intense workout. And you see here quite beautifully, they did Fran, all right? They did again, a super hard intense workout. And then they measured the counter movement jump different days after this Fran. So before, right after Fran, so literally like two minutes after Fran, obviously then you will have a decreased counter movement jump. And then 24 hours, 48 hours and 72 hours. And you see quite interestingly that only just after Fran, there's a decrease in amount of centimeters a person could jump this like a 15% lower. Then it creeps up and it's actually already significantly higher compared to the, the zero time exercise. So this means that there was after 24 hours and certainly after 48 hours, there was, let's say, a full recovery, at least based on this parameter. You can also do other uh, parameters, obviously. You can ask people how well they feel recovered. Usually, actually, that's a very good metric, something for coaches that are listening here, is simply talk with your athlete. How well do you feel recovered? And that is uh, something they also did here. And they measured this of, let's say, the upper body. So how well do you feel recovered in the upper body and in the lower body? And you see here that the lower limbs, indeed 24 hours after, there is still, let's say, not a full recovery. 48 hours also not, but then 72 hours, there's a full recovery period of the lower body. The upper body is much faster recovered. That makes sense because you're probably not that sore. You just use your upper body uh, much less. So that's only after 24 hours. And then you also have creatine kinase. What is that? That's also a measurement of recovery. 
Creatine kinase, it's a cool one. It's actually, uh, let's say, an, it's an enzyme that sits in, inside the muscle and that is involved in the creatine phosphate energy system. Not super important here. What is important? If there is muscle damage, literally like micro ruptures of your muscle, the muscle opens up, the sarcolemma opens up, and the creatine kinase would literally enter the bloodstream. And that could also be, be dangerous in, in some way or another, at least for, for many physicians, this is quite dangerous. But it's a good measurement of muscle damage, right? Or it's a it's not a, it's, it's a measurement of muscle damage. Obviously, when there's high muscle damage, there would be more CK or creatine kinase entering the bloodstream. And you see here, 24 hours after the FRAN, there is indeed a, a substantial, like a triple in CK in the blood, which then decreases almost back to baseline 48 hours and 72 hours. So this data indicates that after one FRAN, but it's important, it's only FRAN, it's not back squats or they didn't do high volume training, just one FRAN. In relatively untrained people, it can take up to, let's say, 48 hours in some cases or some parameters, 24 hours to be fully recovered. Okay, this is one FRAN in relatively untrained people. What does it actually say, right? Because you have something that is called the repeated bout effect. And a repeated bout effect is, let's say, an adaptation where, whereby a single bout of exercise protects against muscle damage when you do another bout, when you do a second bout. You probably felt that, for example, you start a new back squat session, you do four times 10 at a certain percentage, you feel pretty sore, all right? But then you do the same exercise or the same rep scheme the two days later, you feel already a bit less sore and then always less and less and less sore. So that's why I think recovery from one friend would initially be maybe 24 hours or 48 hours, but then when the athlete becomes more and more trained, it would be much less. And that's also because of the repeated bout effect. So now we talked about, let's say, the, the effects on the muscles, the neuromuscular system, how sore you are, how, let's say, how damaged the muscles are 24 to 48 hours after intense CrossFit. That's nice. But we can also look at it from, let's say, an energy perspective. How fast do your energy sources within your muscle that propel the muscles actually deplete? And here I think I have a super cool graph that shows the uh, decrease or the depletion in Glycogen and glycogen, if you followed one of our previous or many of our previous videos, you know that glycogen is, let's say, stored glucose inside the muscle and also inside the liver. But let's talk about the muscle here. And it provides energy during intense workouts, for example, above the anaerobic threshold or above the VO2 max. So very high intense exercise. And you see the intenser the exercise, for example, on the left side, CrossFit, the faster it depletes, right? So it could be that you do a 10 minute workout, a very hard workout, and your glycogen is as much depleted as for example, doing a two to three hour bike ride at a moderate to a medium pace, right? So that's something that people sometimes forget. They say, yeah, I only did CrossFit for 10 minutes and I'm fine. But because the intensity is so high, and the energy production via anaerobic sources, which we know now is definitely there during CrossFit, is very inefficient. So you need a lot of glucose to produce your energy. It could be that you actually are fully depleted after a very short, intense uh, CrossFit session. That's why I think it's important to replenish these glycogen stores, the, the glucose stores. And how you do that is to eat carbohydrates in close proximity of the end of the workout. Because we know that exercise makes the muscle, let's say, more sensitive to glucose in the hours when you stopped or after when you did exercise, all right? You see this in the graph. Initially, there's a fast recovery of glycogen, and then it takes much, much longer. And in good athletes or trained athletes, it takes up to, let's say, 24 hours, maybe a little bit more to be fully replenished in glycogen. That's also why they say, for example, Tour de France cyclists, my, my exercise physiology professor always told me the Tour de France is one in bed because of the recovery, because of the glycogen replenishment of such hard races. That brings us to the tips on recovery. And I separated into, let's say you did a super intense, let's say new workout, whatever, a double benchmark or MRF or something super intense that you're not used to compared to a workout at moderate intensity that you are used to. It's important to separate those, do, those two. So from an intense workout, it can take up to 48 hours to even a little bit more to be fully recovered. While in your typical workout, it takes much less, probably 24 hours and you're good to go. 
maybe that's less than most people actually think. So how you could recover or the activity you, you would do to, to fully recover is in this 48 hours, you can do some light biking, some mobility, some easy session if you want to recover from an intense workout. From, as I said, a normal workout, you don't have to fully always recover and have a, have a full rest day because then you maybe decrease your total training volume and you can do actually some other work some strength work or some other activities nutrition i think that's important after an intense workout you want to eat a substantial amount of carbohydrates right after the workout so 40 to 60 grams of carbohydrates any type of car carbohydrates right after you started for two to three hours. So that's a, quite a, um, a large amount of carbohydrates and maybe more than what you're used to now during your uh, normal sessions. So if you did a moderate workout, you don't have to fully focus on the carbohydrates, just eat your normal diet, including a certain amount of uh, carbohydrates for sure. Don't go keto, it doesn't really work for CrossFit. And then maybe some extras to accelerate recovery. For example, these massage guns or a cold bath, or any other gadgets you have, you could potentially implement them. I mean, as a last resort, after intense, intense workouts, they won't probably do that much, but you could use it. And it doesn't really have a priority if you just did your normal workout. Sleep, sleep is always important, not only for recovery, but just also to enhance the effects of exercise and aim for seven to nine hours of good sleep every night. So that's something I didn't put here, but that's also obviously very important. And then I want to end on, say, a caution to not fall into the trap. What I see a lot in CrossFit gyms is people, moderately trained, RX athletes, like fit individuals, but they just go hard five times, even six times a week with their typical high intensity CrossFit workout. And then it's for them hard to recover and they make potentially some, some gains, but they don't really improve. If you look at the graph and I just try to visually depict it, you see that performance after a workout, let's say 24 hours after an intense workout goes down. That's also what we saw in all the recovery parameters. It just goes down uh, your, your strength and also your conditioning would go down. Then it would creep up. You would actually start to adapt, but then you start already your new workout. So it's always, going up, going down, going up, going down, and there's not enough time or recovery time. I think that's the key point here, the time, not let's say all your gadgets that you use for recovery, but rather the time. There's not enough time to fully recover and you stagnate or only go up slightly. It's better to alternate, right? So you do a hard session and then the next day, take a rest day or do some light activities with your kids or go for a, an easy bike ride, do some mobility, and then go hard again for potentially uh, let's say uh, two sessions so you go down quite a lot in performance but then you take a full rest day or even two full rest days all right so you really periodize within your week within your month the training and that's also how we designed our training plans where i just talked about to have you fully recover and uh, adapt to the training stimuli we also provide not only by incorporating enough rest but also varying between the different exercise modalities strength and endurance and also uh, CrossFit style workouts to fully adapt you and also to make sure you actually get something out of the program. So if you're interested, it's all down in the links in the description. Good, that was already it for today's video. I hope you liked the video. If you do, please tap the like button. It doesn't only help our channel, but also provide you more content related to our content from YouTube. So algorithm knows how you like this type of content and then you will get more of these more educational videos, I would say. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for diving deep into the recovery of CrossFit together with me. See you in the next video. Ciao.